There you go, good. Hi, I'm Charlie. This is Sebastian. And we wanted to tell you a little bit about how the donkey powered sweep here on my farm, Anarchy Acres, is working. And um, it's not perfect, so I'm going to describe what I got here and uh, talk a little bit about how I want to make it better. Um, and hopefully give you some guidance about how you can make your own, because it, it's a lot of fun. And it's a pretty simple project, but um, there's some things that are kind of interesting about it. Back up a little bit, sweetie. Thank you, sweetie. <clears throat> um, so the sweep is going to work. Mine has got an automotive differential. And um, the differential is running backwards, actually. So the sweeps are attached to um, where one of the <clears throat> axles would go. There's one axle would be going this way, and one would be going down into the ground if there was an axle on it. And the drive shaft from the transmission is coming out here. The reason I run it backwards is that then I get a little step up. Um, in uh, the, the, I think the biggest challenge of a sweep is how we're going to efficiently get the rotational power of the sweep up to a usable RPM. These are eight foot sweeps and usually the donkeys are going to be about <clears throat> four RPM. That's, that's what I've found is, you know, um, and I think that's going to be the same even if you got horses because I have eight foot arms on my sweep. Horse is probably going to need longer for, for a bigger circle. So I'm, I'm guessing that most sweeps are going to run in the, in the range of four RPM. And 4 RPM isn't very useful for stuff. Today I'm going to be running a corn sheller, and that likes at least 40 to 50 RPM. And I'm, I'm actually a little bit lower than I'd like to be on that, on that. So stepping up efficiently is kind of the name of the game. And it puts us into kind of a weird place because uh, the torque is, is off the charts high when we're, when we're using sweeps like this. And we got, we got to deal with that. So 8 feet... If I go out and pull 100 pounds, which even I could do, and certainly the donkeys could do, that's 800 foot-pounds of torque, which really is crazy because uh, the, the, the classic uh, Chevy 350 V8, that thing does maximum 400 foot-pounds of torque. So, you know, um, when, we're, when we're, this low RPM is going to put us into a different place of engineering, and we got we got to deal with it. So a lot of torque down here. Um, and it's, so it's got to be really beefy, and I want to I want to get that RPM up higher as soon as possible. So when I run my differential backwards, I'm getting about a 1.75 to one increase. So so one turn here, I get about one and 1.75 turns here, and that I think that I think is going to be normal for most differentials because, as I understand from a quick search, most differentials are in like the 3.5, 3.6, 3.7 range, meaning that in in use in your car you need to turn this thing three and a half times to get the, the back wheel to turn once. And I, when you lock off one wheel and spin it here, you're effectively going to get half of, of, of the differentials ratio. So this is a 3.5, half of that is 1.75. So we're stepping up 1.75 turns for every one turn of the sweep. And then I've got some additional um, gears. These are bicycle, bicycle chain gears that are getting it up. And I, I can't even tell you the ratio here because I just changed it. This this gear, the one that was here a couple days ago, um, I bent so many of the teeth and kind of just literally tore them off with this bicycle chain. So um, this is one thing that's not working well and I got, I got to improve on it. I want to get to like a agricultural roller chain or, or a motorcycle kind of chain, something that's stronger than this bicycle chain. Got an idler on it, which also I found to be very, very necessary um, because my whole mount is kind of flexing, especially when these when these guys pull on it to get, to get going, and you'll see that when we do a little filming here. Um, this is wooden right now. It's definitely got to be made out of steel for the future because um, when these arms get pushed, it just flexes everything here, and it's making alignment. And um, again, it's just that huge amount of torque that you have at low RPM um, that needs to be fixed. A uh, small thing that happened with this differential, by the way, I'd like to have it full of oil, but I full it with oil. When I tipped it on its side, it took about two weeks for all the oil to go out through the seal. So I imagine maybe if you have an old differential, the seals around the um, tire axles aren't gonna be that great and all the oil is gonna come out. So when this goes into the shop, I wanna clean up that one side and just um, maybe silicone it shut. I've, the, like I said, I've got the one axle blocked from turning it all, so hopefully I can seal it all um, hermetically and then the oil will stay in there, because I like that. Because even though we're running very low RPM, I mean, my donkeys are going to run maybe a half RPM, you know, e that would even be a lot um, to go through this. 
but the torque is very, very high. So it would be nice to have these, these gears under oil in, in the, inside the differential. I'm using, um, and this again is something that works okay, but not great. Um, this is a half inch water pipe as my drive shaft. And these couplings are just homemade couplings. Um, and uh, just, just these little plates that took, took four bolts and this, these little rubber pieces are cow mats in between to make a little flexible coupling. And that works okay. I can imagine better ways of getting the power uh, out and away from the sweep to, to, to be usable. But um, I think what I'd like to do now is um, hook up Sebastian and he'll just do a quick demo for us. I can show you how to hitch, hitch up, how I hitch up and kind of how the whole thing works and uh, whole, show you some of the more challenges that are um, part of this kind of a system. So come on, Sebastian, let's go. So you're going to want either a lot of help or some bomb-proof animals um, for your first, first hookups because a lot of things can go wrong. Um, this, uh, that differential is not very well tied to the ground and um, probably if the team wanted to, they could just drag this thing sideways. Um, so, um, and obviously these arms, they're strong, but they're not strong enough to, um, to handle the full power of, of a, you know, a, a scared donkey or something like that. So um, he, knows what, he knows what's going to happen now and, and uh, he understands the circle, so it's working pretty well. You do have to make sure that, um, that he's tied in just right because, come on, it's a little bit, sweetie. Oh. So I, I just know from having done this that he's got to be pretty snug to his, to his guide here. Otherwise, when he, when he walks slow, um, the, the single tree behind him is going to just kind of walk into his back legs and stuff like that. So um, I, I just know the length. All right, so we're good there. Walk on. This is a new uh, threshing attachment for the donkey sweep. And all this is, is actually it's called a re-thresher. Um, uh, just a part that comes off the side of a old uh, Massey Ferguson um, combine. And uh, there's, a, there's a boneyard about an hour away from me where the guy's got 20 of them sitting around. And I've, I've bought two of these so far. So it's, it's, a, it's a part that goes on the side of a combine and it's actually a, a completely integrated uh, threshing unit. It's got um, um, a rotor. And, uh, and little threshing bars that go around the outside. I pulled all the threshing bars out so it's pretty wide open in there. And it's, it's, it's a combination thresher and you can also think of it as a fan because um, it's gonna feed unusual to most threshing drums and that we're feeding it um, in the side. But the way that it works, it, it kind of flings all the air out and uh, then all the stuff goes flying out the front. So I'm just using, using the thresh beans today. And I've done this in the past, um, running at about 250 RPM. And I still have the corn sheller attached because it, it's kind of permanently attached to my system. But also, I'm using it as a gearbox because it does go from uh, four to one increase um, off the shaft. So when, when, I, when I take it off here, this is not the shaft that it's coming in on. And I get a little step up in RPM. So that's getting me up to 250. Really, I want to redo it for next year. I'd love to see this maybe around 400 RPM. I think that'd be a little bit better. Um, it's threshing about 90% of the beans that go through, 90, I would say 95%, but not all of them. However, it's not cracking any. Um, when I've run these in the past off an electric motor and it was much higher RPM, I'd get a lot of cracked beans, which I didn't care for. So um, I think this is going to work uh, long run and, and you know, you can thresh 20 pounds of beans really quickly. Uh, it doesn't take much long, but very long. And so it's, it's just a fun little project. And uh, so far it's working great. Thanks a lot.